please welcome our friend Jim Hemphill and the band's visit director, Aaron. Sorry, I forgot your last name. <laughs> So I have to tell you, I just I love everything about this movie, starting right from the beginning with that opening title card you have that says, you know, this, this happened a while ago, you know, most people don't remember, it wasn't that important, which I think really sets the tone nicely. Uh, where did you come up with that idea, and how did you know that was the right way to start the movie? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a nice question, because when I had the script, and you know, in Israel we have like a film fund, it's a committee, and, and like I was trying to get this script, you know, financed for eight years or something like that, but submitting it again and again. And they were like, oh, it's nice, but it's too small, it's not a film. It's, um, and the most comment I get all the time is, how come this is happening? How come a whole orchestra get lost and no one finds them? And how come this isn't, doesn't make any sense? Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so one day I was sitting and then I thought, okay, I will start the film with a shot of a van, like very straight shot, and then I'll, I'll cut inside the van and there'll be like a couple and she's like having a baby now and he's supposed to pick up someone. And it's like. I'm going to shoot it very messy, like realistic, and the camera will go, oh, oh, oh. and then I cut out again, and uh, they just, you know, get out of the place, and then it's, the film starts, and I will take all those questions away, <laughs> because there was a car, there was somebody, something doing. Anyway, I shot the inside scene, and I had this, uh, this idea that, you know, I will cut between this formalistic to realistic, and then back to formalistic, and... So I shot the scene, but it didn't really work inside. But I had him going out for this pregnancy ball, you know, <laughs> going out and going in uh, again, and and somehow um, my, my father was a film editor, and I had a lot of problem with the beginning because it didn't work. It, and then he said, "Why don't you cut away the the scene in the inside the car and just you?" You have a guy with a, and he drives, and that's it. And I said, well, but it doesn't make sense. But then it made sense because movie, the movies do, do not have this sense that people think, you know? It's like, as soon as I had just a big, you know, yellow ball <laughs> going for it was enough. People were like, oh, okay, it's, <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a yellow ball and something is happening and I'm, I'm just, I want to be there. So, uh, and it was a lesson about, you know, what, what, what makes reasoning for a film, you know, because it's, it's so much different from the reasoning of, you know, logic, uh, it's like, well, it's funny that you say that you had a hard time getting financing because people thought it was, you know, too small or not enough was, you know, wasn't big enough. Because to me, the the pleasures in this movie are so abundant. There are so many just great characters and great episodes. And I'm curious what the starting point was for you when you first sat down to write. I mean, what was the does it start for you with a character or an image or yeah, with the, the, an image? I had I had one day before going to sleep an image of like this commander in a very strict uniform and, and he opens his mouth and he starts to sing this Arabic melody full of emotion and there was something about this tension that this image had between this strict form and this like river of emotion inside which I thought was something the whole movie should have. It should be like a strict form, but you always have to feel that underneath there is like uh, an Egyptian film with love and I don't know pains and the, but the form will always be constrained. In yeah, no, I think you totally achieved that. that. That's a great way, actually, of summing up what I love about this movie. That it does have just such rich emotions running underneath. And same thing with. Um, your new movie, Let It Be Morning, which I just saw, like something I really admire about you is how 
you, how simply and clearly you present really rich, deep emotions. And that's the kind of thing that I think looks simple to the audience if it's done right, but is actually very difficult to pull off. And I'm curious how long it took you to write this script and what were some of the challenges in getting it right? Um, first of all, thank you. I'm happy that you thought this also about Let It Be Morning. And uh, that's my new film. That's a, a moment of commercial. It plays in the <laughs> Chinese theater every day this week at one and at seven. Come on, <laughs> come there. <laughs> and I'll say it's fantastic. If you like this movie, you know, you know, all of this really not anybody do. It's just as great. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, you know, since uh, I had a film teacher, Aidan Green, who is a quite known director. Israel and a good friend, and he always he has this sentence: you have to write simple and aspire to the complex. That is like you have to aspire, but you have to write simply, as simple as you can. And this, you know, a sentence that stuck with me. You know that I try to be as simple, as simple as, as I can with the emotion and uh, and. I, I listen, it was, I have to say, it was such a moving experience for me. I'm a bit, <laughs> usually I'm much more, you know, uh, but uh, it's been a long time since I've seen the film the whole way through. And, uh, and can I speak it even if it's not a question? Yeah, of I, course. I, 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 I want to share it. You know? <laughs> and first of all, this thing with the 35 millimeter is like the thing that it ages a bit it's like the colors of memory you know it's like the, the way you remember or the way you dream and I, I even though they you know it wasn't as you know because the digital they never age you know and that's even a problem because the it's, film should age a bit because they go into the realm of the i don't know the memory you know um where was I? I'm sorry. So, you, know, <laughs> well, you were talking about what a moving experience this whole screening was for you, and then yeah, and, you know, so, uh, about yeah, so about the emotion, and you know, I know that there's all those little moment of complete direct pathos, which is not necessarily, and I really like it. It's not like trying to, uh, you know, they would say these tones of loneliness. They would say those words that are like. Uh, a direct feeling, and, and I like that because it's like, for me, it's like gestures of grand cinema, you know, as you walk, as you say, this is the world, but it's all inside the little bedroom, you know. <laughs> so, I'm still, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure, I, I, all the things I do are kind of, you know, I like the, the most horrible thing to have this funny thing, or you have a funny thing, but it's also heartbreaking, so. I know this mixture is sometimes putting people off balance, and I and I've learned that the laugh is not necessarily that they don't take the scene to the heart, but it's sometimes like uh, and yes, the film always allows this observation and looking, but it's true that. But it was also a process, you know, because this film we are editing it for I don't know a year, and everybody are like watching it and saying this you know, sad Greek tragedy. <laughs> and I, I thought there were funny things all the time, but uh, people were saying all the time, you know, it doesn't move. It's, it's, not, it's not funny. Maybe you put some, <laughs> I don't know, some people don't you know, understand it's funny. And, um, and I was trying to, but, it, and then we went to Cannes to the premiere, and it started, and you know, they were, as soon as they stand it, people started laughing and laughing and laughing. And I was looking and I was thinking, my God, what happened? But I was convinced by everybody that this is a depressive, uh, you know, a Greek tragedy. And, uh, but, because I thought, you know, it was kind of a smile film. But, but it's true that, you know, in cinema, that's what's nice when people come in cinema. The smiles have sounds, it's like laughter. So, um, yeah, I got used, and I laughed a lot today, actually, from things that I didn't really remember, that really makes me, uh, first of all, Ronit, the late Ronit Alcabetz, to see her again, you know, the actress, that she died uh, two years ago, and 
just to see the light from her eyes in this room, I don't know, she was like, ah. And uh, just to see her, to see her, and she made me laugh so much in the film again with all her. When she says, like, you take four, she take four, and how much are there anyway? She didn't even count. Or, like, all the small moments that I forgot, or when she opens the car, she takes it out, she takes it out, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I think a lot of the laughs come from, are these just sort of moments of recognition the audience has. And, and like you said, it's the small moments. And I'm curious with those, like, what kind of environment do you try to create on set to capture those moments, because the performances are so great in this movie, and they're so naturalistic and believable. I mean, it almost, it's very, like the camera work is very formal and obviously very planned, but it also just kind of feels like you dropped the camera into the middle of these people's lives and just caught this stuff on the fly. Um, well, it's a, it, I rehearse a lot. It's a very rehearsed uh, pro, uh, process. I, I'm, it's kind of, so, I, I, I'm looking for a certain tempo, usually, that's like the beat of the, Film. It's like the beat of the way people talk to each other, and uh, which is a beat that I have. And, you know, I remember the first uh, first time I met with Rodit and Sasso, who plays the leading role. And by the way, you can see him now playing this leading role at the Broadway play that plays in town at the Dolby Theater. So Sasso is playing there also. So anyway, the first time I met them, and they started to make this. Uh, dialogue about, uh, uh, so what do you play in the orchestra? Oh, we play like a little rabbit, it was like that, no, but, uh, yeah, very natural, you know, but, and you know, I sit with two great actors, you're still young, and but this is like, the, I think I always tell to my students, this is the moment that, even though it's embarrassing, and you start to tell those big actors, it needs to be in a different tempo, and you don't even understand why, but you kind of rehearse that, and then you find out why the pause is here, why the pause, and, and then along the process there is a moment where they kind of, everyone's getting the beat, <laughs> and they walk at a certain, this is, and I love when this is happening, this, and then, and I think you can see it also in every morning, you know, this kind of inner beat, that's of tension, and I, I, I look, I walk out of, when do you look at each other, when you don't look, what is the tempo of, you know, looking or to have this rhythm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, the movie is really interesting, too, the way that certain scenes, you'll just let the camera sit on a two-shot with the actors and not cut and just let it play out and broken, and that sometimes you're cutting a fair amount. And, I mean, is that kind of thing all planned in advance, or do you figure that out more on set and in the editing room? No, I had like uh, I did a, a storyboard for for this film, and uh, uh, I, I planned the shot. Even though as years go by, I, I tend to be less formalistic, and I think like it's. I mean, as far as just to understand that I have my style, and I don't need to emphasize it in any way, so it's there, you know. And also, if you need a close-up for, you know, this emotion, so take the fucking close-up, don't say, oh, no, take the close-up, you know, put the violin there, because that's, <laughs> you know, you can do that sometimes, you don't have to be shy, you know, so this shyness, so as, as I grow, I, uh, I learn to, 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 you know, release more, I think, uh, um, yeah, but uh, generally, um, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you do have such a distinctive style, and I'm curious, like, who some of your influences or reference points were? I mean, were there certain filmmakers that made you want to become a filmmaker? Oh, of, uh, of course. For example, when I see today, I see the, it's funny to say, but you know how much I like, for example, uh, Saint Julian. Hmm. Which is maybe not the first name, but, but the way they you know, if they stand in the desert, he cross the, you know, on the road, he comes back. <laughs> it was there. <laughs> I love this, you know. <laughs> and uh, and for, so a lot of things come from even Western in a very simple way that you have the short, the short, and then the long short. That's the from each other, there's, there's a lot of these uh, um, 
uh, I think influence. Uh, I, I see it in the film uh, that there is something iconic inside the simple life, you know. So, uh, and you know, I love. I see the uh, early Jarmusch influence on me. You know, sometimes in the street corner, two people like uh, hanging, <laughs> waiting. Uh, and this, I mean, Myles Forman, the the the, the, the fireman's yeah. ball. I, I see in this uh, this film. I see Aki Karismaki's uh, film. Some Tati, some Eli Suleiman. Um, but I think a lot of actually American cinema. I mean, I love Hitchcock, for example. My father would, you know, have me watch all the, the Hitchcock films, and I love them. And so, it's always uh, I like this thing of a bus coming in the road. Someone is constantly, I don't know, in like north by northwest. Like I, I think about this, those scenes all the time when I direct. So you mentioned your father was a filmmaker too. Did you get to when you were a kid? Did you get to spend a lot of time on sets and things? I mean, did this was a world that you were really familiar with growing up. Uh, not a lot because it didn't work that much. You know? So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's Israel and not even though. So I was, uh, but he used to edit on uh, the steam back, So I remember myself, uh, you know, and uh, thinking about films in, from the very early age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, well, speaking of, of editing, you mentioned taking a year on this, and it doesn't surprise me because the balance is so delicate between humor and heartbreak and pathos and, and, and everything. You know, you just, again, just such a beautiful tone you hit. So in the editing process, I mean, how drastically did the movie evolve? I mean, were the, I, mean I was curious, did the movie always end the way that it ended here, or did you experiment with different conclusions? Yes, I had. I had several thoughts about where to cut exactly in the in the end, but there was always a, a, you know a concert in the end. But I had thoughts, and I think the most you know fine the fine way was to cut right after the hand. You know, it would be like that, with black and music. Yes, <laughs> that would be like perfect. But maybe this is what, like I said before. Well, you know, okay, maybe that's the perfect cut, but have some music, you know. <laughs> Don't be, you know, this French, uh, oh no, we cut here, we go here. <laughs> so, um, and I, I don't know why the, the editing took, but all of my films almost I, I take so much. Uh, it, listen, this, uh, the, the rough cut of the band visit, I mean, the. The producer were they were jumping out of the windows. How <laughs> <laughs> <Our> money! <laughs> it's gone down the drain. And actually, it was not it was not working. But I don't know why. And it, it's like a process, and you move, and you cut, and you put, and, and I don't know. It takes me a lot, a lot of time. And sometimes I show my students the first cut because I have it, you know, on DVD. And it's like the same film, you know. <laughs> it doesn't work. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, because little things does it, and a certain tonality, and uh, and it's very easy in my film, I think, to move, you know, because it, once they are stuck there, for example, you can have any order of, yeah. you know, you don't, you, there's no scene where he finds the key, so he has to open the door later. <laughs> So you spend a year and you just you know shifting the scenes around, <laughs> shifting the scenes around until you go nicely from happy to sad to. You know. you know, this is one of those movies. I think the highest compliment I can pay you is that it's impossible for me to imagine any other actors playing any of these parts. They inhabit them so completely. Was it a long, arduous, difficult process to cast the movie, or did you find figure these people out pretty? Easy? No, it was a long process again. And, uh, there were there were two things. First of all, the commander, and anyway, it's it, you know, it's an Egyptian orchestra. The state of the relationship between Israel and Egypt, though they have a peace treaty, is there's no uh, there's a ban on artistic collaboration. I, I couldn't get Egyptian like 
to the film. So then you, you have, I have the, I, I, uh, I auditioned some of the Palestinian uh, actors in Israel, and my casting director said, you have to cast Sasson Gabay, which plays it. So Sasson is Jewish, but he was born in Iraq, for example, so he speaks Arabic, and you know the definition of, but you get to think about this definition. You can think, oh, are they going to kill me because he's a Jew? But you know, you know. But on the other hand, he comes from uh, from the Arab world. I mean, his, his religion is different. But you get troubled by all those questions. You know, I told her, you know, it's the first film I do to cinema, I don't want to get hanged very soon. <laughs> but somehow I, I did a lot of films which were all like, challenging those boundaries in some way. So, but then I met Sasson, and the minute I met him, I saw like Omar Sharif, you know, I, I saw he was an Egyptian movie star. I saw his Baghdad family coming back to life, you know, I saw that and there was no other way. You know? So, you know, uh, I remember I went to, uh, to audition him or and he was a big actor, but he said, like, uh, okay, for sure. And then I thought, no, I need to be fa to have faith, you know. And I called him and said, I want to meet you. And I went to meet him and said, I know I said I'm going to do you an audition, but I decided it's going to be you. And he said, like, uh, okay. Because <laughs> I was like, I'm giving. <laughs> he said, no, he's an established actor. Okay, why did you call me? <laughs> So he was my first, that was my first uh, casting choice. And then I was looking for Dina for, and she was an underwritten character. I mean, she can be easily become this big woman from the desert, you know. And I did find an Ronit, God bless her soul. And I knew her from a lot of films, but you know, she made a lot of dark, like, roles. She was like, uh, always, uh, and to my idioticism, you know, I I just thought about her like that. And then one day my casting director said, what about Ronit? And I said, I don't know, she always has this dark fear. I said, why don't you meet with her? And I was in India, she's the, she was the most beautiful, funny, funny, full of spirits, full of energy woman that, uh, you know, the minute I met her, I remember I, uh, she came to, to to read some scenes and she she sat on this high, on, on the table and she was swinging her legs like that. And in the film you can see her also like that. You know? <laughs> and once I saw her swinging herself, I said, yeah, that's like the little girl from this town who's playful, was, you know, you know sitting there while the boys went home and she had like good spirit, but then she kind of stayed with this movement, but life around her changed. And she's so playful, you know, and she's so, she really took this, you know, much better than I could ever imagine. Yeah, I mean, it's funny that you say the part's underwritten because I would never think that from watching the movie. She obviously was a great gift to you. I mean, the way she uh, brought that character to life. Yeah, she, she makes this, you know, it could be like, a girl that tries a lonely woman, but no, she she made all those you know funny faces, and she had the light, and she and and I don't know if she connected, they, they connected, and it was. <laughs> uh, well, the last thing I want to ask you about because Let It Be Morning is still fresh in my mind, and I want to help you plug it, so everybody is. Yes, it's, please. It's, it's, please uh, I tell you, it's, it, it really, it really is. is it really is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, just right up the street. <laughs> Um, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm curious, you know, that, that movie, uh, you know, again, feels very much, it's, as you say, it's in your E minor or whatever, uh, of course, but it's, it's an adaptation. And I'm curious, is there any difference in terms of the way you approach something when you're writing and directing something that's coming from other source material versus something that's an original? Yeah, it was a different experience for me, even though, you know, every time you sit on the way, you, at least me, I tell myself, 
I'm not gonna be myself this time. I'm something else, and then you find yourself, you know, looking at your own <laughs> ass again, and finding the and because you only know this E minor, and you only know kind of around yourself, so it comes back to to certain tempo that you have. And yes, it was a it was a different process with adapting your book, but the, the adaptation, the, the book is very beautiful. I did be morning, but the adaptation is very free because you know I didn't see it as staging a book. I mean, the book is already there. It's like. The dialogue with the book is inspiration from the book that I took to my images. So uh, I don't know. Every every film is difficult to find in its own way. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's a great movie, and this one was great. It was so fantastic Thank to see this on the so screen much. again. I think I speak for everyone when I say it was just a total delight, and I want to thank you for it's coming and talking to us about it. Was a huge delight to Nine or ten. Nine or ten. Around nine. Quite a broad range. Oh, come around. Oh,